What's up, everybody? This is Carrick with ACG, and it's my continuing quick time mission to bring you reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap. Today, it's the Telltale's Walking Dead Season 3, The New Frontier. Told in a two-part series open, let's see if Telltale's learned from the successes and mistakes of its past, or if, once again, we get the game equivalent of saying, I think we're safe, moments after you just lose sight of the enemy. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's my review for The Walking Dead Season 3. Bad parenting, hitting means love, and finding out what George St. Pierre's been doing after retirement. Graphics are up first. You know, I was pretty surprised to find that regardless of the version, the console, or the PC, many of the issues I had had with the Batman Telltale series were actually not showing up as prevalent here, which included the Telltale stutter that I've begun to name the weird situation for loading that occurs in some of the past titles. But the game's still a Telltale title, which means good and bad animations mixed together depending on how a situation plays out and the occasional character with Iron Face, where it looks like most of the detail has just been removed prior to them being placed in it. You know, when you look at this game, I have to say, it's on par with typical Telltale games, but I was really impressed with the stutter-free performance. Unfortunately, on the PC especially, it still lacks a bevy of the options we expect for a new title on the PC platform, and like my dad, they seem to be absent at birth. As a package, pretty good, especially because it's lacking some of that stutter we've seen in prior titles. Sound, music, and voice. Fucking God, let's go! Those walkers following us. Javi and I will block the door. You guys go ahead and make sure it's clear. Make it fast. Be right ahead of them. Looks like the herd is speeding up a little. I thought it was drifting southwest, but I'm not sure anymore. Every time I think we should just bed down somewhere and wait for it to pass, I can't shake the thought of us getting caught in the middle of it. No. No. I, I, I tried. You're a piece of shit. You know that? And of course, sound is up first. You know, as the cannibal Riddler once asked, what's the sound of one jaw chewing? Well, we get to actually hear what that sounds like in this game, as well as the other sounds you'd expect in a Telltale Walking Dead game, which is the wet and squishy sounds of zombie heads caving in as the Foley artists set the development studio single-handedly cause a national watermelon shortage in the sound booth. While up close and personal, smashing zombie heads always sounds incredibly satisfying. Once again, we do see a complete dearth of environmental sounds, which can be infuriating when zombies are busting in through a door behind characters, or you're in a forest and the only thing you can hear is the nasal passages of someone telling their 4,000th fib for the game. It is absolutely time for Telltale to get a handle on true ambient sound, because besides one area with what sounds like four pissed off crickets in a jar that they kick around, its lack means that the world feels about as dead as the new inhabitants taking over. You know, in a way you can think of it as poorly done green screen, except for the audio version, it may want to sound like someone is there in that environment, but they appear completely disconnected. And of course, that brings us to music. Now, while a couple unique John Carpenter sounding bits do play out, for the most part, this is what you would expect. One part overdose of prescription depressants, one part leaning on a keyboard and never letting off. Mostly ambient, mostly long keening chords with the occasional flourish. It is mostly what you would expect, which means it's completely and utterly unsurprising, but it fits. Take that as you will. And of course, that brings us to voice. So Daniel Ramirez plays Javier Garcia and does a fairly good job lending a bit of down on his luck but still helpful and hopeful air to the main protagonist. While many other smaller groups blend out the voice ensemble around him, right now it's actually a little bit hard to feel that anyone sort of stuck out because as a group they do a very good job, but they are also changing cast and switching around up front a ton of times, which I'm going to talk about a bit in gameplay. And of course, we all know that there's a couple returning characters and they are done very well, but in the end, there's just so many switches it's not really easy to grab a hold of any one person and say boom they're really good gameplay so when you load up the game you start out either loading an old save or choosing how the last two seasons went now this is pretty cool it kept it short but you could tell major decisions and themes were going to be important as we move forward and then you're pretty much thrust into the game and that of course means playing the part of Javier a disgraced baseball player who after a series of insanely unfortunate events is thrown into the main character's protagonist role now you're joined by different members of an extended family that you have and are really moved shuttle quick from rapid fire series of situation to situation to situation that I think shine a light on the problem that the Walking Dead series has had in game form for a bit now. While the first series really let relationships build and solidified the caregiver and protector role quite quickly, it also did that with any other roles. It did it by solidifying gameplay experiences, so it wasn't just told to you, but you actually played them out. You were within them. 
vital, I think, for a game. And one of the major problems here is that some of the decisions you made are sort of contingent on flashbacks that occur after the decision is made, which is really odd, leaving you going, okay, so there is no way in hell I would have actually done that had I known the character's history, which I now know now after the now that I should have already known. If you can't tell me that that's not a developer trying to force your hand to replay a game, I don't know what is. Instead of good story, you've lost all subtlety in the storytelling that these games barely even had in the first place. And what this sadly does is it hurts both parts of the game, the storytelling and the gameplay. Listen, when it comes to the action, you can't play major leagues if you're still splitting the stand and T-ball. But when it comes to action in Telltale, they continue to try. And it's like they get panicked if seven seconds hasn't passed by without a giant flashing X having appeared on the screen. Like you're watching an episode of Oak Island Mysteries, shoving in actions and QTEs where thoughtful decision making should have occurred or would have had a chance to occur. And many of the lessons that were learned during the hotel, the room searches or the motorhome moments from the previous seasons are completely and utterly bafflingly lost. Now, where Batman excels with the duality of damn fine protagonists who play differently across the environments, Walking Dead is mired in the same gameplay as the original as well, right from the start, lending very little to give a shit about. And that makes their lauded 40 various paths you can take seem like 40 different colors of gray socks. Hey, look at these. We got dark gray, somewhat dark, somewhat sort of dark, sort of somewhat dark, and what about somewhat sort of light, but still dark, and so forth. What this does is leaves an odd feeling in the first two chapters of the game, like a bunch of Michael Bay moments that play out with huge pauses as you decide what to do with people that you don't know much about or really give a shit about, but they think you should. It feels a little bit like Road Avengers on the Sega Saturn, which was a car racing game that used quick time events. Yeah. Not very good. You know, the game's first two episodes are a two-parter. They combine for about two hours worth of gameplay combined, maybe a tiny bit longer. But I gotta say, for better or worse, it felt a little bit longer than that. And of course, that drops us into Fun Factor. Uh, yeah, it was okay. Listen, you can't say this stuff matters. You have to show it, and maybe that'll come next episode. But the rush hour hilarity of many groups in just the first hour and literally jumping from one moment to one moment to one moment left nothing to care about. It left nothing that really made you want to sink in and give a shit other than one or two prior protagonists and their entry into this series. Also, in my opinion, one of the most egregious errors is this feels pre-Batman, not post-Batman. Batman did such a good job with the various different systems, and none of that occurs here, despite the fact that there were multiple ways in which they could have. So as you guys know, I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it again rating scale. We're going to go with a buy or a wait simply due to the episodic nature of this series. This is absolutely a wait. Listen. The reason for a protagonist is for you to care. The reason for an antagonist is for you to want to hold their head underwater, you know, just for a little while. Here, after the curiosity of finding out what happened to some of the folks from the prior games, everything else plays out very samey, and no one is really that likable because you have to actually know somebody a little bit to decide if you like them or not. The Walking Dead might still be moving as a gameplay series, but it's more on the way to the second word in the title than the first. So as always, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Maybe check out Patreon or Twitter or the Amazon affiliate links. If you dislike the video, give it a thumbs down. And as always, if you want reviews that aren't two minutes long or filled with sponsored bullcrap, stick with ACG. Peace out and enjoy the rest of your week.